Good morning, friends. By the time you're watching this, I will already be in Korea. So excited. Honestly, cannot believe it's actually here and it hasn't really sunk in for me that I'm gonna be gone for almost a month. This is the longest I've been away with Andrew ever and this is the longest I've been away since my yoga teacher training back in like 2011. I've never taken this much time away from work. I will still be working here and there off and on. So today I am packing, I'm laying out all my clothes, kind of taking inventory of what is going in my suitcase and then actually packing my suitcase because I want to see how everything fits. I'm really excited to put my compression packing cubes to work, pack my carry-on. So I'll show you all the things that I'm doing to save space and also just all the things that I'm bringing with me for carry-on comfort, long plane rides. It's a 12 hour direct flight from Dallas. So on Monday, we're gonna be driving from Austin to Dallas, staying with my uncle for two days, seeing Uncle Dean and Uncle John, and then we fly out on Wednesday. When we arrive in Korea, it will be Thursday their time. If you watched my last video where I was prepping for Korea and doing some of the more admin things that needed to be done for the trip, I mentioned that there was something I was really feeling nervous about for this trip. So I wanna talk about that now. Long story short, I might be celiac and when I get back from Korea, I'm gonna test for it. This is bummer news because I actually thought that my reaction to gluten was actually getting better. I was hoping that I wasn't actually allergic to wheat and it was just my gut that needed some healing. So I kind of just kept telling myself, I can have gluten in small amounts. I can have sourdough bread. I can have like homemade ancient grains, things like that. And I've been doing low dose allergen therapy shots, which I've mentioned in a few vlogs before, it's different than allergy shots where they inject you with like your allergens and then build up over time. So you're more desensitized to it. This is low dose allergen therapy, which is also known as immunotherapy. And that's all about strengthening your immune response to the allergens. Anyways, you can look it up, research it. All that to say is I got a little too optimistic about the gluten side of things and maybe was overdoing it. My body started reacting in a way that it hadn't in the past. I was in a lot of gut pain. I went seven days without going to the bathroom. So that was very painful. My stomach just felt like trash. It just hurt so bad. I had really bad brain fog where I couldn't really finish my sentences. I would just lose my train of thought in the middle of it. I just felt really slow and not myself. That's been going on for the past few months. It just goes to show how normal that feels for me because I'm in this constant state of inflammation that I'm unable to really know what my body feels like when it's not inflamed. In Korea, it is really hard to be gluten-free. A lot of the food contains soy sauce, which has wheat in it. Everything would be fine if they had gluten-free soy sauce in Korea. But unfortunately, that is not the case. And gluten allergies and all that is just really not a well-known thing there. They don't really understand it. It's scary for me because I've been completely free of gluten for the last two and a half weeks now. And I've been feeling worlds better. I'm on a bunch of supplements to help repair my gut and just kill off some of the bacterial imbalances that I have because I have dysbiosis among other gut issues. So it's been a journey and I am feeling so much better and I'm very nervous about going to Korea and getting sick and feeling horrible. Because of how horrible I felt in my last episode where I was like, something is wrong with me. I have a parasite, like something is wrong, but it turns out I'm having an autoimmune response to gluten. I do not want to go back to that feeling. Anyways, I don't know for sure if I have celiac or I could also have the alternative to that which is called non-celiac gluten sensitivity which basically means my intestine is not being destroyed by gluten but I'm still highly highly sensitive to it and should not eat it or if I do in small amounts I don't know, I think you have to kind of figure out your own threshold. Been talking to my therapist about it, who I actually have an appointment with in 15 minutes and she's been kind of helping me process the emotional side of this for me because I really enjoy experiencing culture through the food. I think of food as a way to connect with people, friends, community. It like brings people together. When I can't eat certain things or if I'm that friend with all the allergies, it just makes me feel isolated and I feel like a burden. <sighs> Yeah. So ultimately what I'm gonna do is take each day at a time, each meal one at a time, and just be really thoughtful about it. 
do the best I can. I'm looking forward to cafe hopping. I'm looking forward to seeing cherry blossoms. I'm looking forward to seeing some family. I'm looking forward to biking, park days shopping, spas. I think I'm gonna get my teeth whitened. I might get my eyebrows microbladed. A lot of cool things to look forward to. I have therapy in like five minutes, so I'm gonna go prepare for that. But then after that, I will take you with me as I pack all my stuff. This is pretty much what I'm packing. So I've got comfy clothes. Wanna make sure that we are cozy when we're not out and about. So I've got sweatpants, joggers, some shorts, yoga pants, and some stretchy tanks. I would love to hit up a yoga or Pilates class while I'm there. I just would love to do that for the experience and stay active while we're there. So I've got that. I have my favorite yellow set, my sweatshirt and short set. You've probably seen me wear it. I have it in like three different colors. It is actually from a Korean brand called Noir 9. I think the high will be anywhere between 60 to 65 degrees and the low would be around 40 degrees. And that's just currently. So in April, it might heat up a little bit more. For the beginning half of the trip, I definitely wanted to make sure I had enough layers. I've got just a nice basic long sweater and another pullover sweater. And then this cozy thing, I feel like I wear this all the time, but I like to wear it over my tank tops. So I've got three different sweater options. And these are all basically tank tops, crop tops, t-shirts, and then just other base layers and then my collared shirt which i can wear as like a shacket or as a shirt i'm bringing a skirt and i'm bringing two pairs of jeans a dark wash and a light wash other than that i wanted to have a couple of nicer items so when we go out to dinner with my komohanmoni and my family i just need to have something that is nicer so i have a dress from Reformation, it's this really cute chocolate brown linen dress. And then I also have this top, which I love, but I probably won't wear a crop top to dinner with my Komohan Muni. I'll definitely be a little more conservative. I will bring a blazer, yeah, because I think I could also wear that as like a jacket. And then I'm debating if I want to bring my puffer coat because I don't want to be cold, but my puffer coat is definitely going to take up a lot of space to be determined. really impressed with the quality of this bag. Like this zipper feels super high quality. I do not feel like it's gonna break. This is most of my clothes. Mine is two pairs of jeans and my lounge wear. I do have like the blazer and the puffer coat, but like this is all my tops, all my sweaters. This can be a weapon. <laughs> in this big suitcase. I think all of this can fit in my carry-on luggage. And then my big suitcase, I don't know. I'm kind of hesitant to put all of my clothes in the big luggage because if my luggage goes missing, then that'll be a problem. <laughs> I do have this box full of other travel things. So I know we will take up more space, but those are like plug adapters, chargers, tech equipment, which I'm taking with me in my carry-on. I don't know what to do. Okay, so we have our shampoo, conditioner, body wash, and lotion. I have these old plastic baggies that I use every time I go on a trip. So they're kind of gross looking, but they do the job. I'm really curious to see if these end up leaking. I've heard that they're pretty good based off of the reviews on Amazon. So fingers crossed. I really like to have my own shampoo and especially body wash. I have very sensitive skin. Anyways, watch my other video <laughs> where I share with you some of those things that I bought. I'm leaving all the stuff that I wanna put in my carry-on out here, along with face masks for the plane, some zit stickers. I always tend to break out when I fly. Other than that, I am just washing a couple more clothes. I have a bunch of underwear and socks. I'm taking two hats and that's pretty much it. The other thing I forgot to mention was pajamas. Obviously gotta pack those, but I pretty much just sleep in big t-shirts. So I just packed three of those. We have a washer and dryer in our Airbnb. So I'm definitely gonna utilize that. And then I'd say, 
probably halfway through our trip, we'll wash our clothes at my cousin's Airbnb or a laundromat, whatever. Bringing two pairs of shoes plus my New Balance tennis shoes that I'm gonna wear on the airplane. Those are also gym shoes, so things I can run around in, work out in. These are my platform sneakers for more like day to day. And then these are my nice shoes. I'm not bringing any heels. Should I? No, I'm not bringing any heels. <laughs> Next, I'll show you my chargers and cords. These are all of the cords. I really don't like messy cords. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. Mine and Andrew's philosophy when it comes to packing chargers and things is every man for himself. <laughs> he packs the cords he needs for his stuff. I pack the cords I need for my stuff. I have a lot of equipment and things that I bring, so it's just easier that way. I make sure to bring a phone charger that is both USB-C and USB. Beyond that, I really recommend Anchor as a brand for different plugs. We have an external battery from Anchor, A-N-K-E-R, and it's just really good. Like this is a very fast charger and it has a USB and USB-C outlet for it. In addition to this, I'm also just bringing one of each of these. And this is my phone, watch, and AirPods charger. I love this thing for travel because it packs really small and then I can just lay it out on a table. It just plugs into this guy. I have a couple of these. These are the adapters. We have both C and F. I think they both work. I just got a couple of each just in case. If you're noticing that this is a smaller bag than my previous vlog, you are correct. I ended up getting the wrong size. So if you are getting the base weekender, make sure to get the mini weekender because this will actually fit under the airplane seat as a personal item. The other weekender, regular size weekender bag is too big to be a personal item. So I had to return and scramble last minute to get that figured out. But here we are. This is actually way better. It fits so much, but it's small and compact and it's easy to lug around. So I'm very happy with it. This is it. I'm done. I'm gonna go to dinner with my uncle and Andrew and have one last night in the States before we fly to Seoul. I wanted to do a cool transition from like here to the airport, but I have nothing left in me to give. I'm so exhausted. We're off to Seoul. See you soon.